Ever wondered about the hidden science behind the quiet hum of your fan? Or the smooth acceleration of an electric car? The answer is surprisingly simple, yet powerfully complex. Electric motors. We rely on this seamless transformation of power every day. This video unlocks the fascinating physics, the dance between electricity and magnets that creates all that motion. We promise to pull back the curtain on how these devices are engineered for every purpose imaginable. Don't go anywhere. At the heart of every electric motor is the flow of electricity. Let's start simple. Imagine a battery, a wire, and a light bulb. When you connect them in a loop, electricity flows from the battery through the wire, lighting up the bulb. But for the circuit to work, it must be complete. If there's a break anywhere, whether it's a switch or a cut in the wire, the flow of electricity stops, and so does the light. This is called conventional current flow, where electricity moves from the positive side of the battery through the wire and back to the negative side. Now, let's bring in magnets. A magnet has two poles, north and south. Opposite poles attract, while like poles repel, Simple enough, right? If you bring a magnet near a metal object, it might stick, and that's because of these magnetic fields at work. But magnets are not just fun to play with, they're crucial in motors. But wait, there's more. When electricity flows through a wire, it creates its own magnetic field. This is the basis of an electromagnet. It behaves like a permanent magnet, but the best part is, it can be turned on and off. Imagine wrapping a wire around a bolt and running electricity through it. Instantly, the bolt becomes magnetic. So, why does this matter for electric motors? Well, we'll get to that in a moment. The key takeaway here is that both electricity and magnets are involved in creating motion, exactly what we need to make motors work. Stay with me as we dive deeper into how these forces come together. Now that we understand the basics of electricity and magnets, let's take it a step further. Imagine a magnet spinning. What would happen if you brought another magnet close to it? If the poles are opposite, they'll attract. And if they're the same, they'll repel. This behavior is the foundation of how electric motors work. Let's break it down. Take a permanent magnet and place it on a spinning platform. As the magnet spins, it aligns with any nearby magnet, trying to match opposite poles. If you swap the nearby magnet for one with the same poles, the magnet will spin in the opposite direction because like poles repel each other. But what happens when we use a wire coil instead of a permanent magnet? Here's where it gets interesting. When electricity flows through a coil of wire, it creates a magnetic field around it, turning the wire into an electromagnet. Now, we've got a wire that can act like a magnet, and just like a permanent magnet, it can attract and repel other magnets. But the magic happens when you flip the current, when you reverse the flow of electricity. By flipping the direction of the current, you reverse the magnetic poles. This is called polarity reversal. So now, instead of a steady magnetic field, we have a changing magnetic field that can keep pushing and pulling objects. This polarity change is crucial for motors. If we use this in a rotating system, we can create continuous motion. The electromagnet's poles switch back and forth, causing the system to spin. In fact, this is essentially the basic principle behind an electric motor. The electromagnet keeps spinning, constantly attracted and repelled by other magnets, and creating motion. Now we've got the building blocks in place, but how do we turn this into a working motor? Let's take a closer look at how we can make the spinning motion continuous. Keep watching. So far, we've learned about how electricity creates a magnetic field and how magnets can either attract or repel each other, depending on their poles. But here's where it all comes together. Polarity reversal. In an electric motor, we need the electromagnet to keep spinning, 
To do this, we continuously reverse the magnetic poles so that the magnet keeps being pushed or pulled, creating constant motion. This can be done by changing the direction of the current flowing through the wire. When the current flips, the north and south poles of the electromagnet flip too, causing the magnet to either attract or repel the permanent magnets surrounding it. Let's dive into how this process works in a real electric motor. Imagine an electromagnet sitting between two permanent magnets. The electromagnet's magnetic field is constantly trying to align with the permanent magnet's field. However, to keep it spinning, we need to reverse the current through the electromagnet every half turn. This is where a component called the commutator comes in. A commutator is a special ring attached to the armature, the rotating part of the motor. The commutator works by constantly reversing the direction of the current as the armature spins. This ensures that the electromagnet's poles switch every time it reaches the halfway point of a full rotation, keeping the motor spinning continuously. In addition to the commutator, brushes are used to maintain electrical contact with the commutator as it rotates. The brushes are spring-loaded, so they stay in constant contact with the commutator's segments. As the armature turns, the brushes transfer the current to the electromagnet, which flips the polarity, pushing the magnet to the next stage of its spin. But there's another part of the motor that plays a huge role in making the rotation smooth. Torque. Torque is the force that causes the motor's armature to spin. The more loops of wire in the electromagnet, the stronger the magnetic field, and therefore, the greater the torque. This means that more loops translate to more power and a faster spinning motor. Now that we know how polarity reversal works and the role of the commutator and brushes, we're really close to understanding the full motor mechanism. The process we've just described is exactly what happens inside the simplest motors, like the ones that power your toys, fans, and even household appliances. But how do we make motors even more powerful? Stay tuned, because we'll cover that next. Now that we've seen how polarity reversal keeps the motor spinning, let's talk about how to make that spin even stronger. Enter torque, the force that makes the armature rotate. Torque is directly related to the strength of the electromagnet and the amount of current flowing through the wire. The stronger the electromagnet, the more force it can apply to the armature, which means a faster and more powerful motor. So, how do we increase that strength? One way is to add more wire loops around the armature. The more wire you wrap around the core, the stronger the magnetic field becomes. This is because more loops mean more electric current passing through the wire, which strengthens the electromagnet's force. Essentially, you're creating a stronger magnet, which generates more torque, causing the motor to spin faster and with more power. Another way to increase torque is to use more electricity. By increasing the voltage, you increase the current flowing through the coils, which directly boosts the strength of the electromagnet. However, more electricity also means more heat, so the motor has to be designed to handle that extra load without overheating. Now, here's something cool. In bigger motors, you often see multiple loops of wire wound around the armature. This allows for a smoother, continuous rotation because instead of just one loop powering the motor at any given time, multiple loops take turns providing the electromagnetic force. This is why motors in larger machines or industrial settings are so powerful. They have more loops, more current, and more torque working together to create a smoother, more powerful motion. In real-world motors, torque is the key to how fast and efficiently the motor operates. The more loops you have and the more power you can send through the system, the faster and stronger the motor's rotation becomes. But there's one more factor to consider, the motor's design. Let's take a look at how motors are built to manage all this power and keep things running smoothly. Now that we understand how electric motors work, let's talk about where they're used. Motors are everywhere. 
From the smallest gadgets to the largest industrial machines, electric motors are the driving force behind so much of the technology we rely on every day. For example, fans use motors to spin blades and circulate air. Without motors, we wouldn't have the cooling relief that fans provide on a hot day. Similarly, toys use tiny motors to move wheels or make parts spin. Even the electric knives we use in the kitchen depend on motors to make their blades move back and forth, slicing through food with ease. Motors are also at the heart of larger systems like electric cars and industrial machinery. In these cases, the motors need to be even more powerful, with more loops and higher voltage to handle the heavy loads and long durations of use. The beauty of electric motors is their ability to transform electrical energy into motion, making them one of the most fundamental components in modern technology. Whether it's a small toy or a massive factory machine, motors make the world go round. To sum up, electric motors power our everyday life, turning simple electrical currents into useful motion. The more we understand them, the more we can appreciate how vital they are to the world around us.